All right. I have uh, uh, invited um, Bill Moore. He's state chair of the Constitution Party. At least in other states, they call it Constitution Party. In Michigan, they call it U.S. Taxpayers Party. Well, first of all, I, uh, I want to commend everybody for being here tonight and uh, telling your stories. It takes a lot to get up in front of a microphone and, and a handful of cameras and, and uh, be so transparent. And I understand that. And I have seen story after story after story. And for those who have never been exposed to the CPS uh, and that system, all of this appears unbelievable. But I've been there. Uh, I've walked through several people with their problems, the, the same problems you described tonight, and uh, uh, I just I just want to commend you for being here tonight. It, it, it takes a lot, and uh, I want to commend all of those who are running for office, uh, Judith Fay and, and uh, Dina, who, who is a ball of fire. You get to know Dina, you, you have to back up five or six feet away from her just to protect yourself, but uh, I'd vote for her if she was in my district, that's for sure. And John Stedman and uh, uh, Brian, uh, forgotten his, I, I need to learn that because I can vote for Brian, so, and I, and I will. Uh, so anyway, John, you used a word, you took it right from me. The word is root. The scriptures say that what is the root of all evil? Money. Money. Only one of you knew that. Yes, thank you for the correction. It is the love of money that is the root of all evil. And some say, follow the money trail. Any problem in society, politics, personal uh, difficulties, if you follow the money trail, you eventually get to the root problem, right? Now, money being the root of all evil, what, what does a root do? It, it works its way into the ground, and it doesn't direct every evil specifically, but the root feeds the tree. The root feeds the evil in the system many times indirectly. That's what is happening here with Child Protective Services and this, this whole system that we're talking about tonight and dealing with. Um, there's a lot of talk about the Constitution, and I almost hesitated to get up here, John. I, I at one point tried to get you to cancel me, just because I'm going to stand up here and just talk about dry, boring things, completely unemotional, I hope. And uh, you folks have been up here and cried, and, and I understand where you are and where you have been. But there's a lot of talk about the Constitution now. And let me introduce myself first. I'm a father of 10 children, stepchildren, and adopted children. Uh, I've got, uh, I'm married. I have, last count, 15 grandchildren. And I'm uncertain about that. It was 14, 15, 16. We just had another one. I'm not sure where we are at this point. Uh, but uh, I also chair the U.S. Taxpayers Party of Michigan, which is a ballot-qualified political party. If you look on your ballot, we're on there. We run candidates. Uh, nationally, as John said, we're the Constitution Party. For instance, Florida. You can vote in Florida for the Constitution Party. I uh, also have recently organized a group called FLAG, which stands for uh, Family Legislative Action Group. And uh, we are making attempts to rewrite and recommend legislation to protect the family and uh, education and, and some other side issues. Okay, now for the third time, let's talk about the Constitution here. Maybe we can get to it this time. The Constitution is a document that authorizes government. This, this little Constitution is what creates government on the federal level. It's only that thick. The, the books of law would, I don't know how high they would be. I never figured it out. But, but uh, there's a lot of law. But that which establishes government is this little book. 
That which limits government is found within its pages. And I won't go into a long explanation tonight because time is fleeing. But Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution is the article that defines the Congress and gives it its authority. All right? Section 8 of Article 1 says, The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excise taxes to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. That is the most misunderstood and controversial statement in the Constitution today. Let me read that again, and I'll, I'll break the sentence up a little bit this time. Congress shall have power to pay the debts, provide for the common defense, and provide for the general welfare of the United States. There's a lot of people that read that and say, oh yeah, Congress has to provide welfare. But that's not what that says. It says provide for the general welfare of the United States, not individuals thereof, of the United States. It is responsible as a federal government to provide an environment of good general welfare for the states. That's a political statement. It's not made or put in there to say that Congress has the responsibility to make sure we're well fed or to make sure that everybody has a right to abortion or to make sure that every child protective services program in America is f fluent and well funded or Congress does not have the right or the obligation to make sure that you are well fed. Okay? Here's what Congress has the right and the obligation to provide. <clears throat> it specifies what is paying the debts, providing for the common defense, and providing for the general welfare specifies that in the next 17 points, and I'll abbreviate a couple of them again for the sake of time. One, Congress has the obligation and the right to borrow money on the credit of the United States. Congress is obligated to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with Indian tribes. Congress is to establish a uniform rule of natural Nat, I'm sorry, naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies. It's their responsibility to govern laws regarding bankruptcies. Congress is obligated to coin money, regulate its value, and I'm paraphrasing, and foreign coin and fix the standard of weights and measures. We know what a pound is because Congress says that's what a pound is. Okay? It's what they do. It's what they're supposed to do. Congress is to provide the punishment uh, of counterfeiting the securities of current coin of the United States. It is the, are you reading along with me? That's unfair. I'm looking for that, uh, that okay. that section. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let me read that one verbatim. Uh, to provide for the punishment and counterfeiting of uh, the securities and current coin of the United States. Okay. Uh, good. I've got somebody checking me. If I paraphrase wrong, stop me. If I run over time, John, throw one of those bottles of hard lemonade to, uh, at me. Okay. So far, nothing in there about funding CPS, right? Congress is to establish post offices and post roads. And if you go look in your dictionary, post roads does not mean build interstate systems. To promote the progress of science and useful arts uh, by securing limited times to authors and inventors, that's uh, trademarks and uh, patents and copyrights. To constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. To define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas. To declare war, which they haven't done since the Second World War, by the way. 
uh, grant letters of mark and reprisal and make rules concerning captures on land and water. Congress is to raise and support armies. And let me put a little of my concern in here. It's followed with the statement, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be a longer, for a longer term than two years. Congress may not fund the Army for any more than two years. How long has it been funded? At a time. At a time. Congress is to provide and maintain a Navy, to make rules for the government and the regulation of the land and naval forces, to provide for the calling forth of the militia, uh, and, and the rest of it is, is dealing with militia and uh, how, how Congress is to deal with the militia and, and war and uh, uh, states, state land and so forth that it, it needs to purchase. Uh, so Congress has the obligation to perform 17 tasks, plus a few intermittent ones here and there through the, uh, through the document. But not once is Congress given the authority to supply money or aid of any sort to organizations, state organizations like protective services, like adoption agencies. Um, uh, if, you, if you just start looking on the internet, go to the state website and do a word search and see what that brings up. I don't care what word, any word. It just brings up a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of different links and, uh, and you start looking through those links and you find more ridiculousness going on in the state level. Did you know homosexuality is still illegal in Michigan? Do you know that there's a state agency called the uh, Michigan Department of Civil Rights who's promoting homosexuality in the state of Michigan? How come? This document has a Tenth Amendment that says, and I'll look that one up because I misquote it all the time. I'll read that verbatim. A Tenth Amendment says, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or the people. That means that if it's not written specifically in this document, the federal government has no authority dealing with it. That <clears throat> now, I, I said all that to bring me to this point. I'm very proud, again, of these people who are running for office. And it doesn't take a great mind, and I'm, I'm not talking about any one of these people. I know these people. They're great people. <laughs> it doesn't take a great mind to run for office. It doesn't take a great mind to sit on a, a, a panel or to work in, in the Kent County, some of the uh, uh, committees that are put together by the Kent County uh, uh, the Kent County government, good grief, the, the, uh, the word escapes me here, but uh, uh, the Kent County, all, all government agencies have committees that they put together made up of regular people, right? You can apply for these positions, you can work in these positions and uh, make recommendations and so forth. Those are positions of great influence. The one coming to mind right now is a gun board, and I know there's dozens, but, but you can apply and, and maybe get a job on the, on the gun board and determine who gets a permit. You know, there, there are uh, numerous of these, these uh, committees. You can run for office. You can get involved in government. You can support candidates. We've heard some, from some excellent candidates here tonight. If you live in Kent County or one of the counties that they're running in, one of the areas, get with them. Start handing out brochures for them. Spend a couple hours a week just handing out brochures, representing these candidates. Let's get some good candidates in office. The only way to get it changed is either through the court system, lawsuit, and I'm with John. I hate lawsuits. I, I really do. I, I lost a wife to cancer a while back, and I believed I could have owned one of the area hospitals, uh, but, but I didn't. I, I just despise lawsuits. The other way is to get good, constitutional-minded people elected and get it changed. Uh, 
John, I, I'm going to leave it at that unless you've got something you want me to say more. But uh, okay. I said I would, would summarize this in, in two words, uh, and I'll get to those two words in a minute. Uh, what I did with uh, uh, the section of the Constitution that Bill just read is uh, I acted like a teacher with it, okay? I didn't change any of the words. I just kind of moved them around, put them in groups. You know, it's got a paragraph on Navy and a paragraph on Army. I just put them all under one heading, defense. That's half of what the powers of Congress uh, consists of. I mean, it's half of that paragraph, Article 1, Section 8. Um, and then it has national things and it has international things. There's only a one uh, piece of that that has anything to do with states, and that's interstate commerce, okay? If you go to my website, Tynstra for Trustee, okay? I'm running for trustee in my township. Uh, I, I think that the decisions that have been made need some further discussion before they continue to be made in that fashion, okay? I, I, again, I'm using my words carefully here. Um, and I could go in, into a lengthy discussion uh, about a tree, okay? But anyway, uh, I mean, $628 they spent, and the other guy said, no, I got mine for 25 and my other friend says, I got mine for 10 and then my other neighbor said, well, I got uh, 100 of them for $10, or 100 of them for $20, and then my son uh, south of here says, uh, Hey, there ought to be some public land where somebody can uh, dig one up and just transplant it. And then my son up north here says, well, my mother-in-law came and planted five trees the other day in a couple hours, you know. And, and so it, it requires some common sense, uh, some good judgments and, willing to, and willingness to discuss. That's why I'm running. But if you go to my website, you'll find my paraphrase of the powers of Congress. And as it, it lists about 10 or 12 things. That's what they're supposed to do. The problem is they think that they can handle your lives better from a thousand miles away than you can. When I speak to the state legislature, I say, I think you folks are as smart as the folks in Congress. I, but you're closer to the problem. I think you can handle it better. Then I speak to my county commissioners and I say, I think you folks are just as smart as Congress. And one of the commissioners interrupted me. He says, no, we're smarter yet. He might be. But uh, the thing is that they're closer to the problem, okay? Family matters are things that should be handled from close by, okay? And the problem started, uh, the problem got much worse with child abuse when Congress started to fix it, okay? In the early 70s, they started to work on fixing families. Remember that they're a thousand miles away from us, okay? So they're on average a thousand miles away from the citizens, all right? There's 15, 16, 17 congressmen in Michigan trying to run uh, too many things. They need to stick to international and national business. That's what they're supposed to be doing, okay? They've gone too far when they got involved in light bulbs, health, education, welfare, diapers, on and on, okay? Those things should be left to the states, as the Constitution says in Amendment Number 10. Amendment Number 10 says, if it's not specified in Article 1, Section 8, you got no business doing it. They need to go back and reread that. I don't know an easy way to fix that. But that brings me to the two words, okay? They have tried to manage child protection from a thousand miles away. They do it under Social Security. There's Title IV. Okay, Title IV feeds money to the states under certain circumstances. Where do they get that money? Can anybody, have you ever checked your check stub? It comes out of your paycheck, okay. So your paycheck money goes to Washington. Washington sends it to Lansing. Lansing gives it to DHS, all right, all with strings attached. How does DHS get the money? There's three ways that DHS gets the money uh, in the whole child protection thing. They may have been, may have been well intended, okay, but there's three ways that they get the money. They get the money, well, <coughs> there are, there, I, sh I shouldn't say only three, but th three main ways that need to be corrected, okay. One, they get money when they jerk a child and put the child into foster care, okay. That money, uh, the, the amount spent per child per year is $22,500 per child per year 
That's average of all funds going through a funnel and then going out to various places. That number is good. I can show you that number in a Senate bill. It's a good number, okay? Uh, the amount of that money that goes to the foster parents is, well, less than half, okay? That means that there's a $10,000 chunk that stays in the DHS administration. I'm using approximate figures, but they're good figures they're, to the best of my ability. I, uh, th they are correct, okay? All right, then a second way that money comes in to the state, federal money comes into the state, is when an adoption takes place. Now this doesn't always happen, it's called an increasing adoption incentive bonus. Increasing adoption incentive bonus. If the state can increase the number of adoptions this year over what it did last year, it gets a bonus on the number of children increased. That bonus can be from four to $8,000 per child, all right? What do you think that does to the decision-making progress, or the, the process within, you know, DHS and CPS? Uh, I think I know what your answer is. Third way that, uh, that I believe is improper and counterproductive that uh, the money flows is for adoption care, all right? I don't have good figures on that. I do have a friend that I go to church with who has five adopted children. He says to me, the amount of money that we get for adoption care is similar to what we had in uh, foster, what we got for foster care, all right? And what were those numbers that I said? There, there was about 10,000 that got left in DHS for foster care. Then there's uh, up to 8,000 per child that got left in DHS for an adoption increasing adoption bonus. I'm guessing, this is an educated guess, uh, if you wanna look at figures, I have some, but I, I don't wanna take the time this evening. I will try to post them on uh, Citizens for Parental Rights website soon. Uh, but the third way is that adoption care, continuing adoption care. If my friend is uh, giving me a good clue there and I can make an educated guess, it's probably about the same amount of money staying in DHS under adoption care as there was under foster care. That was in the neighborhood of 10,000 per child. So if you have 10,000 per child for foster care staying in DHS, you have up to $8,000 per child uh, in adoption bonus uh, per child. And then you have somewhere, I'm guessing, in the neighborhood of $10,000 for adoption care. And remember that adoption care goes on year after year, all right? Um, how much does that add up to? Possibly 28,000. Let's be generous and say it's a $20,000 figure, 25, it's in that neighborhood. We're really talking realistic numbers here, 20 to $25,000 price tag on the head of a child when a child can be jerked out of the family's home for whatever excuse, adopted out and cared for in adoption. As uh, Judge Cronin said, there are uh, real abuse cases. We don't like them. Nobody in this room wants to see abuse, okay? But there's also far too many children being taken for far too flimsy of reasons. You all are aware of that, painfully aware of that. The two words, I'm getting to them. What did Bill say was the root of the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, all right? The love of money is the root, kind, root of all kinds of evil. When I was a kid topping onions, we had to pull the onions out of the ground, hold them over the crate, and chop off the tops and let them fall in the crate, and we got 10 cents. And guess what? There wasn't anybody standing under the shade tree. They were all out there in the hot sun on the black dirt, pulling up onions and chopping the tops off over a crate, and we got 10 cents a piece. When I worked as an auto mechanic, I got paid by piecework, okay? I knew on that uh, 304 V8 water pump job, if it had air conditioning, what it was gonna pay, and I knew how to uh, bend a certain bracket and pull it out of the way and cut my time on that water pump job by about an hour, okay? I still got paid the full price. Money talks, okay? What does money do then to the child protection process? 
I call it politely, I call it an ethical distraction. There's the two words, okay? They're courteous words. Ethical distraction, all right? Ethics is a, a method of guarding the conscience and the process of what's going on. When I went, worked on my counseling degree, we had a class in ethics. You know, if you knew the person or you had some connection, you know, you're supposed to refer. If you didn't agree with the person's behavior and you couldn't provide objective counseling, you're supposed to refer to something else. If you had a, someone in counseling that, you know, was attractive, uh, you couldn't have any kind of relationship that was romantic until two years after the counseling stopped. So ethics is a way to guard the process. All right, and I think what we have is ethical distraction. That, I think, is the root of the problem. We have a solution for it. We think it would solve not all problems, but it would certainly drastically reduce the number of wrong removals. We can reduce the number of wrongful removals by reducing or by eliminating that ethical distraction. If we can stop that price on the head of every child of far too much money. If I offered you $25,000, would you think twice about how maybe you could get that and still be okay? Yeah, you'd think about it anyway, wouldn't you? Um, it's, it's natural, it's normal. If your employer could make a huge profit on some transaction and you're working for your employer, if there could be a, a, a profit of thousands of dollars, that would affect your decision making. You know it happens when a salesman comes to your house to try to sell you something. Okay, you know it happens. And so that's thing, something we can fix. It's a simple idea that we have. What I want to do is follow the Constitution, get the Congress out of that business. Do I want to just have a, a bomb go off or a light switch go off? No, I think we can do this in a, a fair, rational fashion that's uh, somewhat peaceful. I think in, that we can reduce that funding, that federal funding, over a gradual five-year period. Cut it down 20% per year over five years and let the states take up the slack. If the states are watching their money, it's much closer to home, it'll be spent more wisely.